Hey guys, I'm getting some PTSD looking at this, but here is my final year engineering project. Probably the largest thing I did at uni after your mom, and let me take you through the despair that was pretty much my 2016. And yeah, this might be a multi-part video kind of thing, but now let's see. So for any of you who don't know, in your final year, you have to do this huge project to kind of showcase your knowledge and skills as an engineer and as an academic and... Often you get given a project topic, but sometimes you get to pick your own, which can be a bit of a double-edged sword, but that's what I did. Although my project didn't start as the development of a mechatronic post-stroke hand rehabilitation device, it actually started as the development of a thumb prosthetic. Because at the time I had visions of starting a prosthetic startup and I knew there weren't any prosthetic thumbs that were anything more than just decorative pieces of silicon, and so I figured once I graduated I'd turn my project into a product. And that was actually the project proposal I initially submitted, and it got accepted, which was awesome, and so I arranged to meet with an occupational therapy prof at my uni to get some insights before the project started, and by chance, she told me some stroke statistics. And it was something like, for every 10 people who've lost a thumb, there are 10,000 people living with a disability caused by a stroke. So at seeing this really tragic, untapped market primed to be exploited, I said, fuck the invalids, let's make some money. <laughs> no, but it was obvious that my time would have been better spent on that issue. You know, most people who have a stroke can never get any rehabilitation. They're literally just left to atrophy into oblivion. And the reason for that, wait for it, is just because they don't have access to rehabilitation. It's pretty scary. Now, the most common disability caused by a stroke is to become partially paralyzed, so you can't or can only barely use half of your body. And usually just one arm becomes really weak, and this is something you can typically rehabilitate, but only if you have access to a rehab clinic. So I figured I'd make a small, cheap, at-home device to focus on the hand, since if your hand doesn't work, why would you bother rehabilitating your arm? And you'll quickly learn to never use your arm, which will cause it to atrophy and remain paralyzed forever. So if you can get a person's hand working again, they'll have a reason to continue rehabilitation and everything else kind of follows, if you know what I mean. And that's where the idea for my project kind of came from, but there were a few things which if they didn't go my way, I probably would have just picked some boring predefined project like, I don't know, studying the anatomical implications of cyclical compression forces applied by a palm to one's face. And the first obstacle was that this was pretty heavily outside the scope of the project. You know, no mechanical student is really expected to design a complete electrical embedded control and programmatical system. But by this time, I had already learned a lot about microcontrollers, electronics, and had written a few apps, so I felt reasonably confident. Spoilers, I shouldn't have. But my project did nearly get stillborn at the proposal stage because the professors didn't think it reasonable. But naturally, those sadistic fucks let me do it. And the next obstacle was the mentor, you know? While doing your project, you have to have a mentor helping you and guiding you, which if you need guidance can be awesome, but often the mentors can kind of take command and waste a lot of your time in meetings and writing updates or whatever. They are academics after all. And I knew early on that there were a few mentors which I did not want and I would have rather done some boring project instead of dealing with them for an entire year. Although again, I got lucky and my mentor was actually the head of mechanical engineering, which meant he was a pretty busy guy and kind of let me go rogue and do my own thing, which I was used to, I guess. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't do something easier or cooler, and the reason was that if you do something colossal and epic, it would look awesome in a job interview and you'd really enjoy your time during that year. But if you're a full-time student, you will still be doing a full-time student's load of courses, and these are the most difficult courses of the degree. So do you do something interesting and risk failing a course, being pushed back an entire year, losing your motivation, dropping out and slipping through the metaphorical cracks of society and landing in the very literal gutter? Or do you do something easy and be bored for an entire year, have nothing to show off to potential employers and probably never get a job, but get high grades? So is it your future or your present that you want to fuck? But yeah, it is kind of difficult to find the balance, and honestly, there were a few times that I felt like I was simply not going to finish in time, and there were many kids who didn't, and you kind of begin to feel like someone who is existentially disillusioned, in that you don't know what you're doing, why you're doing it, or if it even matters. 
But before you know it, if you're presenting something real and the pain you went through to create it doesn't really matter. Anyway, that kind of covers the preface literature review of it all, but in the next part I'll dive into the throes of the engineering that went into it and how you even go about approaching a project like this. Until then. <laughs> <laughs>